Welcome back, everybody, to episode 77 of that Range Life of Show, sometimes about golf. You will notice that is not Chris McEwen in the other camera. That is my good friend, Victor Afable, VA Shafts. What a pleasure to have him back. Victor, you were on this show, I mean, over a year ago, I feel like, at this point. Yeah? Yeah, and I just want to start out by saying um, that I'm much better looking than Chris. So, sorry. Chris. I mean, that, right. And that, that, that's a personal opinion as well. I say he won't he won't take offense to it. And uh, we, yeah, better looking than Chris and myself. We we know. We know. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's without without saying yeah i mean the proof's right here on the screen um let's get up to up to speed here on the on the past year pandemic there has been health concerns for actually for both of us if i'm not mistaken you you got hit you got hit by the old covid right yeah i was uh i was down i was down for the count back in november yeah man um, feel brutal I, i was in the hospital for like three four days so and then you had a golf business to keep up and running, which turns yeah. out big year for the golf industry and um, gigantic year. Yeah, things were uh, things were going well. Are that's going good. Well that's good. Still. Good. And I think I think people, um, you know, as as things open up now and and you know, COVID is basically coming closer to an end. <clears throat> people have a lot more things that they can do and. Mm-hmm. I think we're kind of getting back to the normal cycle, the normal golf cycle of sales. And um, it's um, it's I think I think we're going to I think we'll finish way above standard normal, a normal sales year. But uh, it seems like it's starting to go back into the the uh, the the normal trends and uh, settling in a little bit, settling in. And, you know, we were every every golf company and is st- I'm sure it still is, was really behind your production. You know, sales are up, demand is up and production is um, is is, you know, slower, put it that way. So, OK, because of the demand. So, so it's not a good scenario, let's just say people don't. I mean, when I say you were on the show, I want to say you co-hosted with me like show number three of when Chris and I started this YouTube show. And, uh, you, like I said, you and I do go back. Uh, you are one of, you're one of the inner circle people that when I need to call on somebody, whatever it may be, for whatever reason, you're the, you're one of the guys and you're happy to do so. And I can't, can't tell you how much I appreciate it, especially, uh, I think starting driverangeheroes.com, I think uh, these last few weeks coming out of my own uh, personal health hellhole. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are you doing, by the way? Better. A lot better. I'm uh, I'm definitely a different person these days, For yeah. and I'd say for the better, depending on who you talk to. Um, yeah, I don't know. Life's changed a little bit, and I'm okay with that. Lord knows. Uh, here's what I've been saying. I... The things I love and like in life, I love and like a lot more and much harder. And the things I don't care for, I really don't care for now. And yeah. that's okay. I'm yeah. just like, you know what? I don't have time for that, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, but let's do a quick refresh here before. And we're, you know, you're, you're, you're the VA of VA shafts. And I think that's probably what people know you best for. So we'll dive into that, but it's not why we have you here today. We'll get into that, but let's give everyone a quick refresher. If they didn't watch the early show, tell me about VA shafts yourself, your background. And, um, I think why I think there's a good reason VA shafts has had a lot of interest over the pandemic as golf has had the uh, big explosion it's had, but tell us a little bit about all of it. So we always joke about in golf that once you're in golf, you can't, you can never really leave golf. You That's know, true. People, people are in the industry and then they leave and next thing you know, they're back a couple of years later or six months later, whatever it may be. Right. So 38 late, 38 years later, I'm still in the golf industry and, and have had a pretty long career and, and it's been fun. And you know, I've worked for companies like, oh, I got my start with all the graphite shafts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I took a departure from shafts and worked for golf pride and 
was with Fujikura, ran the graphite design division uh, in the U.S., um, co-founded the startup of Oban Shafts, and uh, five years ago started uh, uh, VA uh, Composites. And um, Yeah, yeah. I think we should point out, too, this is on my wall every yeah. week. Every week, we're at roughly 77 straight weeks of this. Big VA guy myself. Love the love everything from VA shafts. Legitimately too. Not I know everyone loves to be like, oh, it's just whoever's gonna send you a shaft. Like it's not true. Uh, and I love to push the old. We're fortunate in this position because we can try all this different stuff from all these different people and play whatever we want. I love VA shafts. Love it to death. Okay, you can go back and watch other episodes of VA shafts talk. Big VA shafts guy myself. Victor. What else are you up to? Tell me about your late. I don't. Is it right to say your latest venture? Um, I don't. I don't feel like that sums it up right. But the, you you have something else going on right now that's not VA shafts. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know, and and quite honestly, e- even up to this date, we're not exactly sure how to how to refer if how we refer this um, this new shaft if it's just a another line extension or a subsidiary of uh, VA, okay. uh, but, it, but it's called Badass, B-A-D-D-A-Z-Z. And we launched it probably, yeah, we really launched it in the last, uh, in the last month. And uh, the, so we, we kind of look, you know, everything that I've done in probably the last, what, 15, 16 years has been targeted to the premium market. Everything that we, everything that I've come out with, has never been really below two hundred dollars, mm-hmm. all the way up to whatever six hundred dollars. Um, and so we would, in the industry, we would call that um, uh, more of a premium market and premium shaft market. And but there's there's this whole other market out there that um, is a shaft market that maybe you would call it an entry level market or um, people that are just looking to, um, they broke their shaft and they go into the repair shop and and they need a new shaft or um, they go get fit and, you know, they're just, they're not ready to spend a thousand dollars on a driver. They get, they get hit with that sticker shock. Right. Cool. I spent, I got the club champion deal for a hundred, you know, friends of both of ours, Yeah, you know, 150 bucks for a driver fitting. And then when they hit you with like, okay, that's going to be 400 bucks for the driver head or the driver. And then another 800 or 400 or 300, whatever. Right. On top of that, right. people get hit by them. Like, whoa, okay, hang on. Can I get fit for something a little more in a realistic price range for me? Right. You know, and, and the key is, I mean, we want to, we want to really offer um, the golfer mm-hmm. value. Uh, we want to we want to offer uh, great customer service and great performance and a great product. So, you know, and and so that that you know that really that that even plays into the sub one hundred market, which mm-hmm. the badass shaft is sub one hundred. Now, oh, okay, we um, we met you know it. it, it Club champion, it's, you know, whatever they're, they're selling it for 130, 100, 160 dollars. So it's it's still below what we typically do in that two hundred dollar. I would say it's still not a two hundred dollar and yeah, up shaft. Yeah. And if you really get into it nowadays, I mean, even in, in steel, right, a basic steel iron shaft, that's frankly a pile of trash is still like thirty dollars. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, when you start basically anything under two hundred of any quality in the shaft game is a is a good price like it's reasonable even i'm trying to think and i don't want to like start dropping other brands but like i can't really think of any other brand who's making something decent that isn't in a similar price range you know that's quote affordable right like they 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 are still a hundred bucks plus and oftentimes and that that's not an unreal i don't think a hundred dollars 150 bucks is a crazy price range like that's just what that's what you decent know, stuff has to cost. And you I mean, you could probably go on for days because you have to hit, get the stuff made by, a man, you know, someone. So 
I don't I don't think it's crazy to be like I can get I can consider a hundred and thirty dollar golf shaft affordable. And and it's good it's good timing because because of COVID and a golf was the only thing that you could do. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of new players that entered the game, and these players have figured out that uh, custom fitting is is the way to go. Now I want to kind of bring this to the next level. I'm going to start yeah. playing a lot more golf, and so I should really get custom fit. And but they may not be prepared to spend the kind of money that you know maybe a player that's been in the been playing for a, for a little bit longer and 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 can afford it. So there are right. a lot of different reasons. But beyond that, the, so what we've done is we've come out with more of affordable quality product called Badass, um, you know, cool graphics. You know, I've, I've, I've got one here. Um, I just so happen to have one. Yeah, imagine uh, that. I figured we'd talk about it, but you could kind of see it. Mm-hmm. The, the, you know, the, it's um, it's Badass on here, and we have Powered by VA on the side and, and pretty small. Um, and cool graphics, once again, you know, we're, we pride ourselves on graphics. And then the iron is is kind of a more of a neon and a green type color as well. So, um, it's been, that, I, that iron shaft has been, so being the golf nerd that I am, I follow all the, you know, golf nerd accounts I'm supposed to follow. And, um, you know, to see a, a wood shaft get a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of shine, if you will, isn't surprising, like, you know, whatever the next hot thing and people are willing to spend money in their woods. But, when you start getting into iron shafts, especially in the graphite world, it, it's a commitment. And, uh, you know, it's five to eight clubs in your bag, so it's not a small yeah. thing. I've been yeah. intrigued by how well that iron shaft's been doing. A lot of people putting the badass uh, iron shaft in play, yeah? Yeah, you know, and it's not, you know, price price doesn't necessarily dictate better or best, you know. Or, I mean, imagine that, yeah. You know, it, it's it's about what fits you the best. And the key is, and, and the important message is always go get custom fit. And right. That's really going to tell you. And uh, the, but, it, but it's done really well. <clears throat> we're, we're really excited with, the, with what's happened. The difference, be, the difference on this shaft is all our shafts are designed to be basically what we call um, layer flag table roll. You know, it's it's designed with different flags at different angles. Um, we hey, take let's get, let's get, let's get crazy here because I <clears throat> I like to think that people are also. Uh, really, really nerdy about this stuff, and have friends who own uh, golf shaft companies like I do. What does that mean? Why, like, if I'm if I don't know anything about this, like when you say those terms, what does that mean, and why do I care about that? Well, and and quite honestly, if you get a chance, you know, on our YouTube channel, which is VA Shafts, we have we have a video on there that shows how graphite shafts are made. So okay. if you get a chance, you know, anybody who's, who's watching or listening, if you get a chance, go to the, you know, go to YouTube, look up VA shafts and uh, remember to subscribe and hit the like button. I was say, make sure you do that. Don't yeah. worry. We'll give you and a chance comment, to plug, plug all of it at the end for sure. Yeah, and comment below as well. Um, but, but you can, you can find out how graphite shafts are made. And that's, that process is, t- is typical to how we do every one of our shafts except for the badass, which I'll get into in a second. Um, and it's and it's basically layers of graphite at different angles to allow us to do different things, decrease the torque, increase the torque, you know, make it stiffer down at the bottom where, you know, it's going to launch the ball a little bit lower. Um, we can, we can move weights around, you know, the, you know, the uh, nemesis is the, is the uh, most counterbalanced uh, shaft in golf right now with the yeah, yeah. Right towards the butt end. So we, you know, we put um, tungsten in the, in the, a tungsten powder in the, in the butt end to do different things. So there's a lot of, a lot of things we can do in, in that manner. The badass shaft is what we call filament wound. So if you can just imagine a mandrel, a steel mandrel sp- spinning, and threads going, you know, uh, graphite threads going back and forth along mm-hmm. the spindle, it starts to create 
a wall. And right. that's and it's computer driven, basically. So it's very it's very accurate. It's very, you know, it's 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 um, very consistent. And right. that's how we make these shafts. The, and, and um, you know, we, we, we're using less exotic materials, but still great materials. And, um, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, it's, it's better performance. I mean, we, we're still getting great performance out of the shafts. Um, we're doing a little bit different than, you know, most of our VA shafts have, you know, our lines are like, you know, we'll have a 65 gram um, R, S, and X. And where this line, the 60 gram shaft is an S. The 55 gram shaft or the 50 gram shaft is an A and, and, you know, and an R. And then we have a 45 gram shaft, which is an A or an, an L flex. So it's more, it's more um, weight related to flex as opposed okay. to, you know, we're offering one shaft with all these different flexes. So a little so bit we, different. We get on driverandcheers.com. Check it out, everybody. We get a lot of comments um, all over the board. You know, I, I should start by saying a lot of people think like I weigh this much. I'm this tall. What flex and what weight shaft should I be swinging? Uh, I swing a driver this fast. You know, like they don't get into misses. And it's, it's a very complex answer. Really, it's not, you know, it's not a simple solution in terms. You know, there's a lot of things to consider. But when you do pare it down to, hey, we're only offering 60 grams at stiff flex, 50 at regular, et cetera, et cetera. Why, yeah, why is that? Flex. And what's the thought? Like, what's the thought behind that? Why, why do it that way? <clears throat> well, you know, you can actually a dealer, you know, our authorized dealers know, know our, our shafts pretty well. And even with this shaft, you could take a 60 60 gram S flex mm -hmm. and if you tip trim it correctly, you can get it to an X or okay. you can get it to a strong S or, or a weak X. So there are some things that you can still do differently with the irons and the woods to get them to be uh, more geared for that player's swing. Uh, and so they know how to do that. That's why, that's why we don't sell shafts to the consumer direct or anything like that. You like, we don't want we don't want people going home and and building it incorrectly and installing it incorrectly. Then things break. It's a wrong shaft, wrong flex, everything like that. So, um, but you know, I guess I guess it's just a it's a new line. It's a way to do things to simplify things, especially because of price point. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, it's just less complicated. I mean, it makes sense. I feel like it's a simplify, right? Create a, a jumping off point. And then, like you said, if you're doing it all with a fitter and not so much like direct to consumer, just order it off the Internet and do whatever yeah. you want with it. Yep. It, keep it simple. But then you can fine tune it. You know, like I don't want to say it somewhere. It sort of reminds me of like how people used to be. This is a lost art, by the way, the, the parallel shaft method, right? Where you buy it a set of parallel iron shafts and just sort of like tweak them on the butt end and tip end like that got almost that level of complication was probably a lot of people's like dream come true, but you can't build an, an industry off of fitting every single person like that. But it's similar to that, right? In that, Hey, 60 grams, stiff flex. That's a good weight. You need to go, I mean, especially I'm, now I'm thinking like they can add weight in certain parts of the club or shaft grip, whatever, to make up for it here and there. But, um, I mean, I feel like it's reasonable deviations that you don't need to offer a million different options at every step and keep it. I just keep thinking like, keep it simple, stupid. Right. Yeah. And it's also a line that can be used with, you know, like I, I started out with, with, um, whole market segment that we really miss and that's that's the guy who breaks his shaft and he goes into say like a roger dunn and yeah uh, and you know they do a, they're super busy in their in their um you know in their just repair department and they want a good shaft and they kind of fit over the counter if you will 
Right. Uh, like, Hey, you know, what, what, what have you been doing? You know, how, how's your, you know, do you load it? Do you, you know, what's your swing speed look like? You know, what you hit it high, hitting it low. And then they, and they tend to fit that way. And it's, it's a big market and this shaft can fit into that market and, and hit that market and not as much are more, more expensive shafts aren't the right. type of shafts that get fit over the counter in a, in a repair shop. It's funny. I bet. I, I don't know why lately. I think I talked about it on one of our, <clears throat> our shows in the past few weeks, but, uh, right, right before, uh, let's just say I went into the hospital, I played a bunch of golf and, um, I teed off on a, it was like a late afternoon twilight round. Everybody's out of town. I'm like, I'm going to go play. And I play the first hole, uh, get to the second tee box, and I find a Mizuno JPX 900 gap wedge with a Project X LZ graphite shaft in it, but broken in half in the garbage can at the tee box. And I'm like, this person broke their club and went, well, this club's done. It's broken. I'm going to throw it away. And it's like, it's pretty easy. Just yank the shaft out of it. Your club's fine. And that guy could walk in and go, you know, hey, I had this really nice Project X LZ shaft that I bought and spent a lot of money on. And they go, well, we don't have that shaft anymore, but you need to get something in there. Check out this badass shaft, right? Like, that's what we're going for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's um, it's not the it's not the uh, the best art form, but it exists out there in a big way. I say more, more than people traffic. really probably think or realize. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Whether it's uh, you know, a couple sodas too many and make a bad decision, breaking a club or uh, an honest, good, fair break. You just took one a little fat and snapped the shaft. Right. I exactly. mean, I could, I'm plenty capable of doing both of those things. No problem. No problem. Okay. So, Badass. I mean, it's how long have you guys been? It's it's been out for. You've had the line now for what? I want to say like roughly six months. Is that is that sound right? Am I am I no, just no, no. It's we all just, a blur? We just, we just released it about a month ago. Okay, so okay. It's, it's only really hit the market like a month ago. Talk about time being a blur, dude. Yeah. <laughs> just so yeah. bad. Um, yeah, I mean, all right, so I, I mean, lost, you lost your mind in the hospital, so. Oh, hundred. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, frightening how true that statement brain, is. Brain fog, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So it's been a month. You like my I, props I set up here? I do. It looks very official. I'm sitting, Much in, like my I'm sitting in my office. It's what? Uh, almost, uh, almost 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday and I was working and I'm glad you caught me in the office, but my office is pretty, um, um, non VA, uh, pimped out. So, I, uh, I took a couple boxes and threw a bag up. I say, is there anything uh, big and exciting in there for VA and or badass fans that we well, need to know are, about? These are actually these are actually all prototypes. So, bunch of bunch of cool stuff coming here. Can't we'll wait. see. We'll see what happens. Uh, so that is going to be my next question. Like, it's only been out a month. Now, all right, let's be honest. Because hey, humble brag here, being we are friends, um, I've known about the the whole badass. Uh, production for more than a month um so it has me almost wondering like is there anything new coming there is there something like the what's next for badass the badass well, line well we do you know i do have a premium line that uh, which i'm looking at right over there uh which is you know uh more more expensive materials that are put into this uh still manufacturing process is the same but it's probably going to be more like a four hundred dollar shaft than okay. what these are, uh, and I I haven't decided uh, you know how we're going to go about that or when we're going to release it. But they are in prototype form right now. And, so uh, is the thought to take VA and really just take it to like these are the because I mean there are other brands out there right now with like seven eight hundred dollar shafts. I'm not saying that per se, but make them like the top premium high dollar stuff maybe make your midline and down badass um well va va will still remain as the premium brand and right um uh, you know badass will just be badass on its on the side you know okay. I just, you know bmw and and car and mercedes and 
companies like that would have a lot of uh, major, you know, good branding. You know, they're able to they're able to come out with you know um, i series that are you know entry level Mercedes and entry level BMWs and um, and get away with it and still not um, <laughs> diminish their brand equity. Okay, and I just want to. Uh, Somehow my uh, series going off on my phone here. I don't like that. <laughs> it's it's um, recording, would... we're recording a very professional show right now. This is unacceptable. <laughs> it was I thought I was asking a question on uh, on Mercedes, yeah. but uh, you know. So, but I'm a little bit. Uh, you know, I want I want to make sure that our brand is is not. Um, you know, the the equity of our brand's not diminished by by low low cost shafts put it that way okay got it got it Here, here's a question i've actually been wondering about and i've purposely not texted you or asked you about this outside of this because i knew we were going to be doing this have you been paying attention at all to the multi-material or like composite putter shaft market in the last year or so yeah, and actually, we do have some prototypes that we're working on right now in the in the um, in the putter in the putter world. Okay, uh, you know, it's never been. Yeah, I, I guess I guess I'm I'm kind of getting into it because it's the the popularity now is is it's, this it's is like that's even my question. Like, just in yeah. general, what are your thoughts? Yeah, on you it? know, it's called it's called demand. You know, somebody some of our competitors have created more demand and. Now our dealers, our our customers, are asking for um, a VA VA branded uh, putter shaft, and so where it's it's more in response to the demand more so than trying to be a me too. I, I, I don't like being me too. I it, say it, that's one hundred percent not your style. Yeah. Almost to almost to a fault, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm sitting here thinking like, so I'll be honest, I love the, uh, I, I am in, flat out in love with the Fuji Cora uh, graphite putter shaft right now. Hats, yeah. you know, bucket caps off to them. They did a really good job with it. And, um, but I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here thinking, I can only imagine what a VA and or badass uh, putter shaft graphic would look like. Yeah. I'm like, I could be the worst putter in the world with it. It's going to look sick as hell in my bag, though. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, I was um, uh, I was just visiting a customer yesterday and and we were we were talking about putter shafts and they said the exact same thing. It's like not only do we know that it's going to be a great performing shaft, we know that you guys are going to do a kick ass job with with the graphics so <laughs> you guys you guys should just make the tagline the shaft isn't that great it's just okay <laughs> but the graphics are really cool so you want it in your putter well you know you've always heard me say and you know at the end of the day it's a 46 inch black tube and i don't yeah, care right. how much technology you put into it it's a real hard story to tell what kind of technology you put into a graphite golf shaft and so you got to you got to pay attention to graphics, and we spend just as much time working on graphics as we do of the proprietary layout and materials and designs that we right. that we use for our shafts. So now I don't, even know, I don't even know what prepreg means, but that's a cool ass dragon on that golf <laughs> shaft. Yeah, prepreg's just the raw material that we use to make make gra- graphite golf shafts. It's a, it's basically a composite material. Yeah, but there's but there's a zillion different kinds of composite materials that we use. Who cares? There's a sick dragon on my golf shaft. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, um, you so know. there is there is some putter shaft. There are some putter shafts in the works. That's what I'm hearing here. You heard yeah. it here first. Yeah, there's putter shafts. There's some, some new premium heavier weight iron shafts. Mm. That we're like, on. I like the sounds of that. I might have to uh, might have to send a text request in on those. Man. That's and, and, we're, and sooner or later, we're going to finish out the the whole Andy Warhol uh, mm. series of the villain and the nemesis. We're going to add one more to it, which I'm not oh. going to tell you the name, but it's oh my gosh, uh, it's kind of a cool name that that goes along with it, and and some 
some uh, cool technology that we're, we're working on as well. But, you know, the, the whole COVID thing is still kind of pushed everything out. Yeah. I, we're just we're just trying to keep up with the demand for for the shafts that we have right now, as opposed to releasing a bunch of new shafts. It's 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 complicated. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, I don't in a way I do. <laughs> but overall, I don't envy uh, the position you're in. I mean, demand people wanting your stuff is good, but trying to figure out especially I mean, I, I, I guess I just I shouldn't say it just me, but like. We all keep hearing the stories about how the grip companies, the shaft companies, et cetera, are just chasing the manufacturers and just trying to get caught up and how difficult it's been. I mean, good problems to have, I guess. But, um, yeah, I could see where you'd say, like, hey, let's just get caught up and keep doing what we do well, and then we'll start worrying about, like, hitting everybody with the new cool thing. Yeah. And then, you know, the difference between us and, and a lot of our competitors is that we don't sell, we don't sell shafts into the stock market with right. OEMs. So, you you know, you don't really, you're not going to pick, you're not going to go to, uh, uh, to the store and, and see, you know, the, all the clubs lined up with our shafts in them. Um, but they do carry us as upgrades, um, but mm -hmm. you don't see them as stock shafts. Yeah, I always... It's always been a tough, uh, a tough hill to climb. I, I, I can think of. I'm gonna, just to be polite and professional. I won't draw. I won't name names. But like we we have over the many decades seen companies fall trying to live by that stock shaft availability model, and it just doesn't work out. Like I'm not saying, and I'm not saying going completely the other way makes perfect sense for anybody necessarily either but there is a certain like happy place i think you have to find well but it's easy for me to say i don't run i don't run a shaft company so of course i can say that from a supplier from a supplier um perspective it's a dangerous um it's a da dangerous adventure because uh you know an oem can say hey uh you know we're gonna do a, a two million of this this particular club and we'll need two million shafts and and you start to to lay out your production demand plan to that and all of a sudden somewhere down the line you've you've created two hundred thousand too many shafts because the the forecast their forecast was off yeah now, now you're stuck you know figuring out what you do with two hundred thousand shafts because God, i've never stopped them stop to think so let me ask you a question and maybe this is a little too inside baseball and i'm probably i might be starting trouble but i'm insert big shaft brand here who sells to the major club manufacturers i'll let it anybody who wants pick the brand they say all right callaway taylor made ping whoever right they all ping's not a good example Call, callaway taylor made titleist we all come to shaft company X and say, Hey, I want 1 million of you, this shaft from you for a stock offering. Now I know Taylor may likes their own graphics. I don't, I don't think Titleist cares in Callaway. Callaway will do their own graphics. So we'll shaft company X create now 3 million of those shafts the same and then just go th they'll go through like an individual company graphics thing or is it like start to finish hard stop like they're all getting their own line variants between the three different runs of them or do you know what i'm getting at here like does that question make any sense you know every every oem is different they some like you said taylor made tends to like to put their own graphics on it yeah and um Guys like Callaway and Titleist um, tend to uh, use a um, a, sh a shaft that's similar in in looks and name of a particular popular graphite shaft. Right. Um, so you know, you know, and that's and quite honestly, that's about the only reason why I would venture to go out on tour and and try and get tour players to use it is because. You know, it carries over into the OEM world. It, you know, it's, right. it's easier for an OEM to sell a club if they have a recognizable shaft that's played on tour. Well, that's where the whole uh, the whole 
what I, I I really appreciate as a hockey guy, I appreciated this on WRX back in the day. I started seeing it referred to as the hockey stick shaft world started to come to be where they started putting like bright neon hockey stick graphics on all the shafts because if I see Dustin Johnson with a fluorescent orange whatever with this graphic on it, I go, oh, wow, I want to hit the ball 7,000 miles. Yeah, I better get that fluorescent orange shaft. Yeah, you know, and the graphite design did a great job. You know, well, you know, they oh, have, have Tiger play. The I, I, I wasn't even thinking of that, but that's yeah. I said. Yeah, play, have Tiger play the orange shaft with, um, you know, with the stripes running down it or the the, the rings on it, yeah, which is r- really recognizable as as well as Spieth. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know, you've got the the ten C shafts with the the orange ring around it. And you know, quite honestly, when at, at the Oban during the Oban days, we we designed shafts so you could see them on tour. We had two rings on there, and and I could I could look at a shaft and I could tell immediately that was an Oban shaft. I, was, uh, I, I I feel like I don't want to go too deep and go into the old days here, but let's just say around that um, that hot run from them, mm-hmm. you weren't seeing too many uh, rich purple or just white like snow white as can be shafts out there so you knew you know what i mean yeah but but you really knew by the rings yeah you know, by by the by the two rings there and you know these with with va we don't have to do that you know our our philosophy is doesn't really matter what dustin johnson's playing because 10 to 1 you're not going to be playing the same shaft that dustin johnson's plays so you, you really guys hit. You, I, I think VA though. Really, and maybe this is your mad genius, <clears throat> which I off this show I will deny I ever said anything like this to your face. Um, I think you guys really hit at the right time because the go- the general golf population who's spending money on the game, like real money on the game, is starting to really understand. Like, I don't need what Tiger plays. I don't need what Dustin plays. I don't need what Rory plays. I need what makes me the best golfer that makes me the best golfer. And I'll spend some money on that. So they yeah, go to the, the various fitting companies and get exposed to brands like your own. People are, tr- are truly starting to understand custom fitting and what it's about. It's not, it's not just, you know, how long is the club and what flex is it and you know, what lie is it? It's, it's more about a lot of different other things. And I think people are starting to realize that and a lot more people are, are more knowledgeable about it, but um, kind of the bad and the good on that is that there are a lot of people that still don't have, they, they don't have any clue. And that's the good for us because that means there's still a lot of business out there that, that we haven't even touched. Right. And, um, it's, um, you know, if you go to, you, you play, play a country club where they join for $200,000 and pay $2,500 fees a month and their clubs are not custom fit and they, they're playing three, four times a week. It's amazing to me. And I play yeah. with those guys. <laughs> um, and you know, I, I don't get it, but uh so anybody listening out there just get custom fit i say that's what that's what we're here for to pound the pavement and keep spreading that that gospel if you will like hey there's a way to go about this and if you're gonna i i I mean here's what i i mean i how i justify it in my own life like if i'm going to spend the money and put the effort into this stupid it's the dumbest game in the world it's so stupid but i'm going to do it like why not do everything I can to be the like be the best at it, make it the best? I, I'm putting, I'm investing a lot of my life into it. Why not optimize that? And I feel like that's not just going to PJ Superstore and going, you know what, that one looks good. I'm gonna buy that one. Shout out PJ Superstore, by the way. I got a whole story about how my car died at their store. And the club repair shop gave me the tool I need to fix my car and drive away. We'll save that for next week. I'll tell you that story. Don't worry, Victor. Um, I'm on the edge of my seat on that one. Yeah, my, only only my life. That's all I can say. Um, all right. 
let's wrap this up. Is there anything specifically you want to send the show away with, or do you just want to start plugging? Make sure we follow you here, check you out there. Tell me, it's all, the floor is yours. No, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. Happy to be alive. Happy, happy that the industry is doing well and, and things are getting better. And, um, you know, it's just, it's all about the, the message that I want to leave everybody with the millions of followers that you have millions, millions on millions. multi-million views that you're getting is mm-hmm. get custom mm-hmm. fit. And it's not just for better players and it's just not for players that have a lot of money. It's for everybody. And you will figure out that you're going to hit the ball longer and tighter dispersion and you'll at the end of the day you're going to enjoy the the the, golf, the game of golf much better who so. wants who wants to enjoy golf like right. the whole point right. is to go out there and be miserable for four to six yeah. hours come on all right that is victor father check him out vashafts.com that's that's the website yeah yep yep that's right and i think from there you can find your way to the badass stuff i am personally excited to check out the badass stuff i haven't yet looking forward to it i'm gonna get you some shafts to to test and you can you can do your review but here's here's the thing and i can't the what just no no, guys i'm easily bought and i've never lied about that (laughs) that. um i will be honest with you knowing this fine gentleman and the gear i have played from him i am so excited about the things to come that i don't even know about especially a putter shaft with a cool dragon on it of some sort um this guy knows what he's doing check him out go find him va shafts google it we'll link it down here somewhere the usual works okay yeah. nice Victor, hat, by the way. bucket hat just for you I, I we should say that prior to hitting record He's like, where's the bucket hat? I said, all right, I got you, Victor. You want a bucket hat? I'll wear a bucket hat. And we went through options. I had multiple, and he selected this one. I appreciate that. All right. That's Victor Afable. I'm Bill Bush, DragRangeHeroes.com. This is Chris McEwen's YouTube channel. I hope he's having a great time in Arizona. Subscribe. Comment below, like the video, do do all the stuff. We appreciate it. As always, head over to Victor's YouTube channel. He's always posting some random cool stuff that I golf nerd over and love watching myself do that. Victor, thank you for coming on. I can't wait to see what you have coming up next. Everybody else, we'll see you next week.